Welcome everyone. This is Thursday, November 20th, 2014. Dr. Ampey and Mr. Thielman are not with us at this time. Mr. Thielman may join us later in the evening. Uh, I would like to, uh, also like to congratulate the Arlington High School girls soccer for winning the Division II North title when they defeated Concord Carlisle 2-0 Tuesday evening. At this moment, they are playing Hingham uh, for the uh, state, fi uh, state final and at this moment it's tied one to one uh, with approximately 14 minutes left. Uh, we have several people at the table uh, getting information as it comes in. So hopefully we'll have a final score. Um, at this time we will have uh, public participation. Marie Meter. Me Me thank you. Oh, Marie, just, Marie, just sit at the table. Sit, right sit at, at the sit. table and talk. At, at the table. No, no, sit at the at table. The table. Sit. Right there. By the microphone. We need you to talk into the mic so we can have it recorded. You can record me for posterity. Yes. Hi, I'm Marie Matier. Uh, I'm from the Arlington Education Foundation. Uh, and um, I happen to not have a child in the high school right now, so <laughs> I'm the one who could come tonight. Uh, but I'm here to welcome you all to come to our AEF annual event Monday at Flora uh, from 6 to 8. Uh, we're very excited uh, about what's been going on in the schools and our ability to contribute to it and to be a conduit for all the people who want to contribute to the schools. Uh, we're excited to, we'll be hearing from Maureen Murphy about the um, Audison School Improvement Grant, which uh, I'm hearing about from my Audison child. Uh, we'll be hearing from Laura Force, who's a Stratton teacher um, whose studies in shadow puppetry, we felt really embodied the kind of um, grant and work that AEF loves to fund. And so um, she is actually the first um, award, or award of the Dawn Moses Memorial Innovations Grant. So we wanna remember Dawn and all that she brought to us. Uh, and so we pick one uh, grant per year now uh, for that award. And so she will be talking as well. Um, this is the third year of our um, technology initiative. Um, and so we are uh, going out in a big way to try to continue the work that we've done uh, together with you to uh, bring computer science back to the high school, to expand computer science and engineering in the middle school. Uh, and so we will have representatives from all of those uh, places. We'll have uh, Dan Sheldon and Larry Weathers and David Morse. Um, and Brandy Whitney and her cohort, whose name is just escaping me, uh, thank you, <laughs> from um, the middle school uh, with their underwater robots and other cool things. And so uh, we'll, now those will be displays in the back so you can go back uh, and check that out. Uh, we'll keep the talking to a minimum and make it the fun social event that it always is. So we hope to see all of you there. Thank you very much. Any Looking questions? Great. Thank you. At this time, I would like to direct us all to the artwork that we have around the room. Uh, it is from uh, Deb Martin, the Bishop and Hardy art teacher, and the classes. Over here, we have grade four Georgia O'Keeffe marker prints. After discussing the life and artwork of the painter Georgia O'Keeffe, the fourth grade students created monoprints of flowers using O'Keeffe's artwork as inspiration. In order to create these prints, the students first drew their images on a flat piece of styrofoam using magic markers. Then they damped, dampened a piece of white paper using a brush. The styrofoam image face down was turned over on top of the white paper and when removed, left behind these beautiful prints. Going down a little further, grade three, sugar skulls. The third graders designed their own skulls in gray pa pass oil pastels after studying sugar skulls created by the Mexican Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, a celebration. First, the students learned about the discussed Day of the Dead. The celebration is on November 1st and 2nd and is meant to poke fun at death instead of fearing it. People enjoy parades in various streets, including skulls made of sugar and decorated. They set up altars to the spirits of their ancestors in the cemeteries and pray to, for the dead to return for that one night. Many people stay in the cemetery all night while others leave a feast behind on the returning skulls and spend the night at home. 
Then the students created their own sugar skulls designs inspired by the Mexican holiday. Unlike crayons, crepe pas are made of oil and when drawn on colored paper, they appear to glow or pop off the page. In the back here, we have grade two Miro creatures. The second grade students created drawings of creatures inspired by the paintings of Juan Miro, a Catalan Spanish painter born in Barcelona. Known for his surrealist art, his work was both dreamlike and childlike. The students in second grade observed and discussed Miro's artwork and how he created his pieces. They looked for the simple shapes that he used to put together to make more complex designs and patterns. First, the students were asked to create their own designs made out of simple and interesting shapes and lines built together to make more complex artwork. The next few art classes, the students were then asked to nicely color in their drawings without scribbling like Miro would have done. Moving over here, right behind Mr. Pierce, is grade five straw-blown nature paintings. The fifth grade has created paintings of animals and natural landscapes and objects using watercolor paint, brushes, and plastic drinking straws. This was a lesson in how an artist can use many different materials to create with. More specifically, how painters can use many materials to make a variety of marks on the canvas. Various artworks using this method were observed and discussed. The students also discussed what they have used in the past to make paint marks on their papers, such as brushes, hands, sticks, sponges, etc. The students were then shown how to use a plastic drug drinking straw to blow puddles of watercolor paint around to create interesting marks on their papers. They were given one class to practice and see what they could do. Then they were, to at, they were asked to paint pictures of animals on natural landscapes using watercolors, brushes, and straws. And our last one is abstract collage by grade one. First grade students created mixed media abstract collages inspired, inspired by various artists, including Marion Cotillis, a contemporary artist from Washington, DC. Cotillis works in various media and creates beautiful abstract collages using maps, newspapers, patent papers, and paint. The students in first grade observed and discussed Cotillis artwork and how she created her pieces. They then learned about mixed media art and how it refers to artwork that uses more than one art medium or material that artists use to create artwork. First, the students were asked to create their own patents on many papers to make them more interesting. The next art class, the students were asked to create their own mixed media collages using the patent paper they created the week before. Thank you. At this time, we will uh, have uh, the budget presentation from the elementary principals. I would invite you all to come up and have a seat. chose to sit that way. It'll make me the next part real easy. Uh, the first two principals to the right are our newest principals, Thad Dig Digman and uh, Karen Donato. Welcome. And I think we know all. Do you want to say anything before we start? Two to two with two minutes left. Mm -hmm. Two to two, two minutes left with our girls' soccer team. So. Two to two? Two to two. With two minutes left. Would you say their name and their Yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. Mark, would you like to begin? Mark McEnany, Principal of Bishop Elementary. Karen Hartley, Principal of the Pierce Elementary School. Michael Hanna, Principal of Stratton School. Kristen DeFrancisco, Principal of Hardy School. Stephanie Zuchikoff, Principal at Brackett. Karen Donato, Principal at Thompson. Thad Dingman, Principal of yeah, Dallas. Yes. Thank you. Did you start No. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a, a shot here from the for the newspaper. Oh, okay. Did you get my good side though? <laughs> you got your hair and makeup done. I know. I came from camp. I it Are we ready? So are you introducing Dad and Karen? I think that's what they're waiting for. I'm that's it. We, well, yes. Okay. Normally, when a new principal comes to the district. Um, there's an opportunity within the first few months to be introduced. We, we certainly, at the time 
of your hire did a press release and um, uh, there was a lot of information but that was that was um, back in the spring and, and now we're here in the fall and it's been a it's a busy agenda this fall and so we apologize that we haven't had you come earlier but tonight is a perfect time since you're here for this for the budget discussion as well as being here with all your colleagues um, they both have said that they would prefer to just give a little background and then um, you know some of their impressions I guess from their first couple months here I, I just want to say that they have been absolutely terrific additions to our team and I think everyone would agree with that um, it's been seamless honestly just uh, they've immediately have jumped in and I think have developed a very collaborative and strong collegial relationship with all of the other principals in the district and curriculum leaders we, um, and I can say with a lot of pride and, um, and truth that we have a very strong administrative team. So with that, I'm going to let you, um, who, who, I don't know who wants to go first. I think DI comes before DO. So no. <laughs> uh, good evening. I'm Thad Dingman. Uh, I started in education in Colorado um, as an assistant director at an uh, early childhood center um, and I was also a lead teacher. I, uh, I was a classroom teacher in public schools in uh, Boulder Valley for seven years uh, in elementary education. I moved back to the East Coast in 2010 and took on a principalship in Western Mass, Great Barrington area. Uh, and that's where I've been the last four years, uh, leading a regional uh, early K to fourth grade uh, school, Muddy Brook Elementary, uh, and, and starting my fifth year here at, at Dallin Elementary. Um, impressions, it's interesting. You know, uh, I think, just to kind of share Kathy's sentiment, hitting the ground running is exactly um, you know, how it's felt and how it's been, it's been wonderful. Um, I, I made this move professionally to work with a collaborative team. I've certainly found that. Um, this is an incredibly welcome group and um, strong group of educators to be working side by side with. Um, great leadership, great systems in place. Um, the, the school's exciting, it's a, it's a fast-paced, um, busy day, lots of kids, lots of teachers. Uh, the thing that has really struck me um, right away is the ethic that the educators carry uh, in the Arlington schools, and especially Dallin. Um, the classrooms and the quality of instruction is really high. Um, they are absolutely earning the, the high standard that, they're, that we're seeing and the outcomes that we're seeing. Um, and they're, they're educators who want to hear about ideas and want to grow, so it's, it's felt like a really great fit. I don't know if I have that much to say, but I'm going to try. So I'm Karen Donato. Thanks for having me here. Um, I am actually an Arlington resident, and my children go to Dallin, and I'm a little concerned about the new no. <laughs> 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 uh, conference later. So far, it's going really well. Um, uh, I started in the early elementary grades teaching, first grade, and then integrated kindergarten. Um, I did some time in life skills classrooms in Medford public schools. And then I spent the bulk of my time teaching in a middle school in Andover with an emotional behavioral program. And for the prior three years to coming here, I was assistant principal at Stowe Elementary School, at Center School in Stowe. Uh, we survived a building project, so it was so nice to come in just on the tail end of a building project. I'm thrilled to be here. I couldn't have asked for a better team to work with. And I know I can pick up the phone at any time if I have any questions as I wade my way through some of the challenges we're facing that I can get Laura, Kathy, anyone on the team. Uh, it's been a great transition, so I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Anyone? Anyone? Questions? Mr. Dingman? Yes. You're not a Broncos fan, are you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we never camera, asked right? that. It's worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You're not getting it. Um, you can take the fifth if you choose. <laughs> <laughs> like to strike any response to that question from the record. Let it be known I did not answer that question. <laughs> um, as long as you're not a Yankee fan. Okay, there we, we're going to be okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. Before we begin, there's two other people here that are here tonight to be supportive. Um, our two elementary special education coordinators, Chris Carlson and Jill Parkin, that are sitting back there. Awesome. And, of course, you know our director of special yes. education. So um, the purpose of this evening is, is, is uh, goes back um, to, uh, to what we started a couple of years ago, which was to hear from 
uh, our, our leadership at our different schools as to what you perceive as being where we are right now, um, how the budget from the previous year is manifesting in the work of the school, and to talk about what you might perceive as ways that we needs that we have, ways that we could even do a better job than we're doing. And so they've been working together, discussion as to um, their presentation. I think, Kristen, you're going to give the main presentation. Karen and I are and Karen, sure. Karen and Kristen are. But this is a joint presentation. Um, the first time we, we did this, every school did it, and we realized that there was, first of all, too much uh, commonality uh, not to do it this way. But I, I think it's important that everybody knows that this was a joint, um, jointly produced and there'll be an opportunity for questions after. Okay. Well, first I want to um, start by thanking you um, and giving you an update um, on the resources that we prioritized in our budget last year. Um, one of the things we asked for were more BCBA and BSP support, um, which Excuse a board- me? Mm -hmm. Would you spell that out? <laughs> Absolutely. I was just going to do that. So BCBA is Board Certified Behavior Analyst, and BSP is Behavior Support Personnel. Mm -hmm. um, and when a student is struggling socially, emotionally, um, we are able to tap into these resources in order to help those students be successful in school. They consult as we develop plans, um, like uh, those described to us by Jessica Minahan. Um, have you seen her presentation? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I recommend you get a chance to um, see one of the presentations if you can. Um, and she's working with the district to build our knowledge um, of behavior through her professional development workshops in her book, The Behavior Code. Because of the increased BCBA support, specific BCBAs are now designated for work at specific schools. While um, they each have two or three schools, um, there is still a point person to connect with when a teacher is struggling with a student that cannot access the curriculum due to their social or emotional needs. In some cases, BCBAs, along with the special education department, may be able to support a school by assigning a BSP to a building with a specific intervention plan in mind, in, in mind for that child. These short-term plans have been helpful in supporting a student so that he or she can remain in their home school in their least restrictive environment. And I think we all agree that we've seen a lot of success um, with particular students um, in that area. Additionally, we had asked for more support for our library TAs, and we are happy to be able to have retained our library TAs. And we are thankful that we are able to increase their importance um, and work with our students with a salary increase. Um, that has been very significant. Um, another thing we had spoken about last year were um, more support for special education liaisons and having um, at least two highly qualified special educa edu education liaisons in our buildings for a second year continues to help not only service increasing special education caseloads, but also helps us implement models of co-teaching to support general education RTI instruction. Because special educators are now able to take on three grades each, they are able to focus on three grade levels of curriculum as opposed to six as was the previous model. We have seen the amount of collaboration with classroom teachers increase because of the reduced grade level load. Liaisons are able to build closer relationships with students uh, that allow them to be more effective with instruction. These liaisons have been able to become part of differentiated group instruction that is based on data and to support subgroups composed of both special education students and regular education students. Having this kind of expertise in our buildings has definitely shown to be effective as we create learning environments based on data and begin to implement co-teaching strategies that benefit all of our students. Does anybody want to um, chime in from there? Oh, also, we're also, um, we had talked about this last year, we'll I'll continue to talk about this, is maintaining small class size. We do feel that this is always going to be a priority for us because smaller class size increase our ability as educators to do the kind of teaching um, and for students to do the kind of learning that our district, um, our district goals support. So that was, was what we asked for or prioritized for last year. 
<laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, what we prioritized for last year. And this year, as we got together, uh, we and moved into thinking about next year already, even though we're only in November, um, we have kept our district goals in mind and are requesting support based on fulfilling these goals. The district's first goal reads that the Arlington Public Schools will ensure that every graduate is prepared to complete a post-secondary degree program, pursue a career, and be an active citizen in an ever-changing world by offering a rigorous, comprehensive, standards-based, driven K-12 system of curriculum, instruction, and assessment that integrates social, emotional, and wellness. In order to do this, we go on to state that students will receive increased support for social emotional needs in recognition of the interconnection between the social emotional needs of students and the academic challenges of the curriculum. So based on that goal, we feel that in order to do this, we need the support of a full-time social worker in each elementary school. Social workers work in each building on a daily basis with students who need support to access the curriculum due to many reasons. Some include anxiety, while others include the need for social scaffolding so that they can become contributing members to their classroom communities. We speak often about, the building, about building the capacity of our classroom teachers around social emotional support for students, and the way we do this each day is with our social workers. They participate in administering plans that help all students access the curriculum and remain in the least restrictive environments for learning, their classrooms. These interventions occur beyond individual sessions and lunch group sessions. The support also occurs on the playground, in the cafeteria, and in classrooms so that students have in the moment support and scaffolding to practice needed skills. Having a full-time social worker in each building has been supported by a grant that will expire at the end of the school year. This is why we are asking for the town to maintain the full-time social worker position in each elementary school. I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in before I go on to the next issue, but I don't know how I would do my day without my social worker. It's a very, very important part of our community. You guys all set? Okay. Um, still in goal one, we have set forth an initiative to emphasize inquiry-based learning in order to promote student engagement and a deeper understanding of the curriculum. We are doing just that this year in mathematics as we are using our math coaches to work with teachers to design and support inquiry-based learning in math. We have begun this work in writing with a literacy lab approach to professional development. Teachers visit others who are models as they teach model writing lessons. They meet and reflect about these lessons. The observing teachers then go back to their classrooms to put this work into place. We would like to implement this model with reading as well and enhance it by providing additional literacy coach support so that when teachers begin to implement these model lessons in their classrooms, they have a coach to work with to provide feedback and strengthen the teacher practice. We have seen the benefit of this coaching model in math over the past two years and look forward to enhancing our reading instruction in the same manner. This is why we ask for the support to have a professional development time for teachers and a .5 literacy coach in each elementary school next year. Everybody good with that? You want to add anything? Okay. Um, our next request is in order to leverage the time children spend in the intellectual and inquiry-based environment described tonight, we've been spending time on enhancing our use of data to inform our instruction. Goal one, initiative four and five, talk about our commitment to narrow the achievement gap by providing subgroups additional support to obtain a PPI of 75 in the aggregate and in the high needs subgroups, as well as an SGP of 51 or higher. Our goal to initiative two states that administrators and teachers will be provided professional development and planning time to be able to systematically and routinely use data to guide instructional decisions and meet students' learning needs. In addition, initiative five references the need for teachers to have support around differentiating for students. We are excited to be able to provide more consistent time this year to teachers for data meetings that are helping teachers to define these subgroups and plan interventions accordingly. What we do need to enhance this model is continued professional development around analyzing data and running these meetings in a way that reaches all subgroups. Further, we would like to modify, improve, and refine our data collection around, around response to intervention. 
Our subgroups are not making the effective progress that we would like to see. We need to have a way to figure out what we are missing and monitor progress. This may include the purchase of a data collection system that would help us bring relevant data to our meetings. This is why we ask for support with providing professional development for teachers and administrators around running effective data meetings and the purchase of a program that would provide multiple data measures to inform student progress and support our efforts for intervention. Anybody ready? Okay. You're a quiet bunch tonight. <laughs> Um, as we work to enhance our instruct instructional practices around math and ELA in our previous requests, we would also like to spend time on thinking about the curriculum that we currently have in the area of science. We would like to start the process around adopting a STEM science curriculum that speaks to, the, to next generation science and is aligned with common core state standards. This kind of curriculum would be more in sync with some of the engineering units and scratch junior units that we currently have at the elementary level as supplements. This is why we ask for support in the purchase of a STEM curriculum. Just tomorrow, oh, you, want, you want to take the telephone? Okay. Um, as we all know, our Tools of the Mind curriculum in kindergarten is helping teachers to provide an environment in which our youngest students gain confidence, self-regulation skills, and their first exposure to discovery and inquiry-based learning. It is this foundation that will prepare these children to continue being engaged in their learning and work to become college and career ready. A recent study of the program by New York University um, that has just been published, the results show that students in tools classroom in comparison with students in controlled classrooms showed gains in executive function as well as literacy and math achievement. Their achievement accelerated in first grade meaning that they learned more efficiently and had a greater growth rate than peers from controlled classrooms showing lasting effects. These gains were especially significant for at-risk students as teachers across the district work with tools coaches and visit mentor teachers it becomes ever apparent that in order to deliver this program throughout the entire day teachers and students would benefit from having a full-time teacher assistant. This is why we're ask we are asking for full-time kindergarten TAs next year. But I also wanted to add that because last Friday I attended a conference um, along with Evelyn DeRosa, the, one of the reading coaches, uh, about Teaching Strategies Gold, um, which is uh, an, a Department of Education initiative um, for more assessments at kindergarten level. Uh, I see people nodding their heads. It's a very big undertaking and the teachers are being asked to do a lot of work and not, I'm not, not questioning the value of the work, just the workload itself is really demanding. So between tools and teaching strategy goals, our kindergarten teachers are really, really feeling the burden this year. Um, and full-time TAs just seem necessary in this area. Should I just finish off? Why don't you do that? Okay, I'll keep going. And finally, we have found it increasingly hard to recruit, hire, and retain qualified TAs to build the capacity of special education and general education instruction. As stated earlier, in order to create intellectually stimulating experiential learning environments that reach all subgroups, teachers need support to run inquiry-based, data-based, and differentiated classrooms. This requires a level of TA support that our TA salary base does not always support. This is why we're asking for an increase in TA salaries for next year. Um, school committee members, we thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening and have shared our requests in order of priority. We are all happy to answer any questions you may have about these requests as well as how we're using our resources around last year's requests. Thank you. Questions? Ms. Starks. <coughs> All right, so uh, you said uh, maintaining small class sizes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lo loosely Can you put. define small? <laughs> uh, I think it's depending on, on the grade level, I would have to say, and you know, and, and, you know depending on particular cohorts. Yep. Um, in the younger grades, to see 25, 26 students in a classroom without a teaching assistant, um, we have really great teachers who are doing wonderful things, um, but the small group instruction that we want to do, the inquiry-based instruction that we would like to do, very often does require, um, for certain parts of the day, uh, more adult intervention in the room than is now available to students. 
So I need <laughs> still need numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I don't. I and you don't have to answer now. I absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. But if at some point you could think about what the ideal is, mm -hmm. just so we know, because I mean, I'm a teacher. I know that in sixth grade, I know about what I can handle, but I don't teach K to five. So, yeah. um, you know, I would love to know from you guys, even if it is every grade is possibly different and that's fine. I just, I feel like we keep saying that and I just don't know what small means to you, what small means to me, what small means to the union is all very different. And so I just want to understand it from everybody's point of view. So if at some point mm -hmm. you guys could at some point maybe think about getting us if, if I could just interject, if we come to a point for what, any reason, economic or whatever, that we have, one of the ways to perceived saving money is to increase class size. We need to hear from you to what's the max? Yeah. What's the max? Yeah, what what's the breaking the, yeah, point? Yeah. That's is important. That, that, that and, really and, is and important. And as a former educator, I think we, I think we can all agree it's going to vary with how the classrooms are made. If you got a lot of IEPs in a room, that's different exactly. than a class that has none. Older ones, more independent, kindergartens and stuff like that. We need to know you met. You people tell us the max numbers. Yeah. So even if it has all those caveats, is fine. You know, like you know, uh, it, you know, it could be 30 if there's no special needs. It can be, you know, I don't know, whatever. But I, I don't know how that works. Right. So. Uh, do I. Uh, This year, you know, really diving into this data even more and more, and being able to give teachers more time to have to look at data. How, if you're really digging into data and you're really looking at these subgroups and what each student needs, you then need to change your instruction and, and give that intervention in a way that those students are going to um, receive it or do well with it. And that starts to get tricky when you're looking at 26, 27, 28 kids. Where's the time then to deliver this, this kind of intervention that some of them really truly need? So I think I probably start to get nervous when we eke past 25 um, in the third through third through fifth, and then you know even maybe even less than that in, in the younger grades. And in you know in hopes that if we have those smaller class sizes in the younger grades, we're creating a foundation there for them that you know they're really able to access what they're doing. And so at, even if the classes do get a little bit bigger in in three, four, and five, they're coming into it with a really great foundation right. for learning. Thank you. That's it. Anyone else? Questions? Mr. Schlickman. Okay. Uh, my, my first annual traditional question is, everything you said are things you'd like us to add to the budget. <clears throat> what are we doing that maybe we shouldn't be that might save us some money? Good question. That's hard. <laughs> Let me of course, just... it's hard, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't have to answer it now. And I, so I'll, you know, I'm not. I don't want to put you on the spot, but we have a finite amount of resources, and you know, our our, our budget is capped by our agreement to the fiscal stability plan for the town, and we've got a growing enrollment, and we've got a lot of pressures uh, on the budget. So, you know, we we can do more adding if we are also finding things that seemed like a good idea a few years ago that maybe we shouldn't be doing and it might save us a couple of dollars too. So as we move forward, and in fact as soon as you can, I don't want to penalize anyone by saying if you find savings on the elementary level, we're going to take that money and spend it in the high school. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, understand that the, it, it, my intention of asking this question is trying to be strategic and trying to get you more than anything, anything you have. So please, 
within your internal conversations, with the conversations with the superintendent and Ms. Johnson, uh, let, let's see if we can't push uh, the other side of the envelope a little while too. And if there's anything we can do that would make us more efficient that we don't see from this level, uh, we, we would certainly appreciate it. Running seven elementary schools it, it, it is slightly more inefficient than if we ran, had one big one. So the way you can get together and share and work together and, and find common, commonality would be good. Now the thing I wa also want to tell you is that having uh, done the elementary principal gig myself, I understand your statement about the need for social workers. I could not live without my social worker and she was unfortunately uh, part time so I didn't have her all day every day and the times that she was out of the building uh, was, uh, was considerably more difficult than the times that I had her in because we couldn't schedule kids needs based on, on what her schedule was so I understand that need very well and I'm very sympathetic to that need. Thank may, you. I, may I just add something? Yeah. It's, it's, it's also a need not only in terms of all that we've talked about mm -hmm. but just in terms of the principal's time prior to having social workers um, in a school or even half time in a school if, if you have a behavior problem it could absolutely take a principal's time all day and we're not we're in a different um, period of education where that's really not possible mm -hmm. to have that happen we don't have assistant principals and I'm not saying a social worker is an assistant principal we don't look at them in that way but on the other hand, that person is able to, um, you know, share the burden during the day when there's behavior problems, and I, I think that uh, everybody would agree with that. Yeah, and respond to them skillfully. You know, not mm -hmm. that, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we're pretty clever, I guess, but but you know, it's a, it's a discrete set of skills that that they've cultivated mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. in their work, and so their response mm -hmm. is also, I would say, even more effective than what what I would do when mm -hmm. you know referring a child to me. Can I ask go back to another question, Paul? Go ahead. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> We've actually been talking about this question, like what could we reduce? Mm -hmm. uh, we, I put the question out, and it always sort of stymies everyone because you, you've heard the top priorities, but you haven't heard all the things that are below that, too. <laughs> right. Um, and so the things that you've already heard, what the effect is of, of the things that we were able positions or uh, added revenue for some other so for other reason how that has such a positive effect so to think that you then derail that mm -hmm. in favor of something else because I, I think that everyone would agree that there's been a very positive change with certainly the way we've restructured special ed math coaches mm -hmm. and that's not something we want to give up and when you look at a school and a school budget it is pretty lean it's mainly personnel and so do you have fewer teachers fewer TAs but we're just saying we want more teachers to have lower class sizes so it's it's very <laughs> it's very hard and we do not have you know, we're talking about the elementary science curriculum that has been something that we haven't put a lot of money into is textbooks and curriculum uh, and so there are more things that we could ask for beyond that as well. So it's it's a hard question to ask because there's no real clear obvious answer to it. Uh, with regard to the social workers, uh, how many do we have right now? Is there a half time? Is a percentage in each building? No, right now no, they we have, have full time, time in each building. Oh, no. But the grant that supports some of the get, you want it to continue. We would like it to time. continue. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And, and, and Diane's not here, but I, they, I don't believe that they are all funded okay. through the grant. Right. How many do we lose? 2.5. 5. 5. Okay. 2.5. 2.5. Oh, we lose 2.5. That's in the grant. And we currently have five people, one in each building right now. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. That we got would a grant be seven. covering 2.5. So we have 4.5 that we're paying for we're looking to I'm talking just at the elementary level mm -hmm. right so we're looking to just playing with the numbers to fund the the ones that uh, the grant okay yes. to kind of, yeah. 
Okay, with this, uh, the halftime literacy uh, coach that you're looking for, I assume halftime in one building, halftime in another building? Yes, that's what they okay. say, halftime per well, building. Well, I just want them, because that would mean, it, it means that one school is doing literacy in the morning, one school is doing literacy in the afternoon. It, it, that can be, as an elementary teacher, I wanted mine in the morning all the time. Well, I was fortunate. I worked in a town that just had one elementary well, school. Well, it's not that model, um, Chair. Um, it, it's, it's more of supporting teachers, so that schedule can oh, be okay. different. Okay. Yeah. These, this, these literacy coaches would be working directly with teachers as our math coaches are doing. That, that's great. That takes a little bit off. Uh, the, excuse me. Full-time kindergarten TAs that you're asking for, do, you currently ha do they currently have a half-time? Half-time. Half time. Most, yeah. most do. Most do. Most have a half time. There was some, Kathy helped to support um, full-time kindergarten TAs in larger, T in larger kindergartens, and I don't remember how many. Yes, days. okay. All right. mm -hmm. But the, the idea is to have full-time, okay. And um, the, the uh, purchase of the data support system, is, do you ha is that just a, a thought, or is there a particular thing that you folks have in mind? Not yet. I don't think we have anything particular in mind. We tossed a few. We tossed a few names around, but it would be something that if we knew we were. Going it, to does do it. it does exist. It does exist. It does and exist, and you, 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 you mm -hmm. it yes. meets the needs that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? This time, uh, I should have prefaced this. Thank you very much uh, for all the work that you've done and continue to do, and uh, you make us proud. Mm -hmm. Thank, uh, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. This time, I would like to recognize our AEA representative, Siobhan Foley. I apologize if I missed you at the beginning. I know. I know. It's all the parents. Yep. <laughs> parents. <laughs> Meeting with teachers. What are they talking about? Want me to announce it? That's okay. No, it's Mark. Mark, it's yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. You have a copy too, if you wanted to put notes on it. Their state. You have it at your table. What did I do? Uh, their, their remarks. Oh. No. Oh, that's no. your class. Oh yeah, I know. Isn't that exciting? Uh, is it and oh, and we'll we'll send it to you. We'll, we'll get oh yeah. It. <laughs> oh. Um, I'm sorry to say that the girls, it was a three to two loss. Oh. They worked very hard at it. And oh, they're number two. We're, we're <laughs> very proud of them, and yeah. thank you all participants, parents and students. They, they, have, right, they have not gone this far yeah. in a long time. They won the Division North, and that is, yes. that is truly an accomplishment as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they won their league. The Middlesex mm -hmm. League is one of the toughest leagues other than the one that Hingham's in. Wow. So moving on, superintendent's report. All right. Uh, the first, uh, first point is the articles of agreement for EDCO. Um, two meetings ago, the committee, maybe it was three meetings ago, the committee um, voted approval of the articles. Um, the Lincoln School Committee asked for an amendment uh, to the agreement, and it's you have a you have that on your in Novus. The, the it has to do with the whether it's majority or two thirds that would vote for an, a capital assessment should that need ever arise. This inf this language, by the way, about assessments comes from the state. They just felt that it would be better to have a two thirds vote rather than a, just a majority. The chance of this happening is very, very slim, um, mainly because the the, um, the Edco doesn't own any buildings. The, the amount of capital that they have is quite limited. But um, the board voted approval of this lang the new language, and now it has to go back to each school committee for a vote just on this particular um, change. That's all. And so what we would need is a vote um, by, the, by the school committee uh, agreeing to the amendment of an affirmative vote of two-thirds of the board members. So moved. Second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, today we had uh, a sad thing happen. I, I, our two bus drivers are, are hurt, but they um, are no broken bones and they're doing much better. Uh, we, we had, I put a press release out earlier today that there was an accident on Lowell Street in which our um, uh, vehicle was broadsided and the, they ended up having to jump lanes and uh, ended up in someone's the residential home's front yard <laughs> near a propane tanks. So it, it, there was a lot of um, activity around this, helicopters and uh, emergency vehicles. But at this point, the good news is that no one was hurt. This is a vehicle that is a backup vehicle for uh, using for special ed students. We always have to have backup vehicles because uh, vehicles break down. In fact, they were coming back from getting a part to fix one of the, one of the buses. So um, you received a notice about that, and I'm very um, happy to report that they're doing fine. I want to congratulate the high school thespians. They, they put on a performance last week of Twelfth Night, which was terrific. Uh, it was so impressive, the range of acting, and also being able to memorize the incredible volume of lines from Shakespeare and be so articulate and clear. Um, it, was, it was a terrific performance. And so I want to congratulate the Performing Arts Department because it takes quite a, quite a lot of uh, leadership um, and uh, patience and good director, uh, being a good director in order to pull something off as well as they did. Some other good news, um, all of our music students, not all, but many of our music students will audition for the Northeast District Band Orchestra Chorus, and we always have a very good showing um, among the students that are selected for this, uh, this particular uh, group, actually three groups. There are over 1,100 students that uh, audition for a seat in one of these uh, groups, a district uh, orchestra band or chorus, and we had 14 students that were chosen. Additionally, we had um, about 50 high school students that were showing their art at the Lexington Society of Arts and Crafts for the last two weeks, and um, apparently it was very well received by, by, by many people. We're going to probably feature some of the art that was, was on display in the next newsletter. But anyway, we, it just goes to show the, the talent um, of our students, and you just need to look around the room here and, and also be impressed at the age of these students and the, the kinds of work of art that they produce. So that's all good news. And I, I, again, I want to echo congratulations to the girls' soccer team because they just had a spectacular season, and we're very proud of them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to the consent agenda. Get it up here. <coughs> All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant number 15059 dated November 6, 2014 in the amount of $415,660.63. Approval of second reading of the following policies, EB safety, EBCB, Fire drills, EBCD emergency, BEDBA agenda format preparation and set dissemination. Uh, I'd like to pull BEDB. The the last one. Yes. Okay. Any other? Uh, entertain a motion to approve everything except BEDBA. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Stocks? Um, I, I'm sorry. I guess I should have caught this last time, but I, I feel like we should not take um, new business off of the list of things that can be on the agenda. And that is one of the things that you crossed out on BEDB. Mm -hmm. But I like 
having that because I like the ability because sometimes we just have stuff that comes up and we don't know if it'll get on the agenda and so I would like to make sure that that gets on there. Sorry, I should have cut that last time. So help me with the procedure. We just so accept just, that as a friendly amendment and move so on they'll right? have to amend it and bring it back. We're, right? We we Won't can vote. We could vote an amendment. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I would just amend to put that. I would like to move an amendment to put back on there mm -hmm. um, the uh, new business item on the agenda items. Okay. Uh, the motion has been made to amend the current document. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion on that? Yes. Um, under the new rules that we're operating under uh, on the open meeting law, basically uh, we have to scope out what our what, what's going to be reasonably discussed on, on the agenda. And having a catch-all phrase of new business on an agenda under, under this context, uh, it really runs afoul of, of the uh, new uh, open meeting law uh, regulations. And if we note that the agenda that we have looking before us does not have new business on it, I don't think I've, we've seen one since I've been back that has new business on it. Um, I, I think the way to get something onto the agenda that we don't have has to be going through the agenda process. So uh, there are reasons not to have new business on the agenda. So, uh, so I might it don't be, think I can vote to support the amendment. Might it be interpreted, I interpreted it this way, that an item that for new business to, for, in other words, a member would bring up at the meeting to be put on the next agenda rather than just calling the, the chair or calling uh, the superintendent. And uh, I just saw it as something that to go forward may not be that that may not have been the intent, Ms. Stark. Uh, mostly, I'm concerned about things that can't wait. Like sometimes things come up, and I agree that we I definitely want to make sure that we follow that law and that we are doing our best. But given that we have to post the agenda 48 hours in advance, and we don't necessarily meet every week. And well, sometimes, I mean, this is open, odd. Well, the we open have meeting law that. affords us the opportunity to, to deal with emergency situations. If, if something came up, and I think we had something once that, that in, my, in my tenure here, that we had to act on mm -hmm. because it could not be, wait for a, a normal posting. They allow that to happen without mm -hmm. anything on an agenda, for a space holder. Mm -hmm. So if the superintendent, uh, we discovered something that required immediate action, we, ha we have to... There's, there's a procedure, we are allowed to act on it, we then make a notification because we couldn't and we let the public know uh, for it. So that piece can be dealt with without a, a placeholder. Okay. If that was the intent, so, yes. Yeah, I mean, if something urgent came up, it would certainly come up under a superintendent's report because I, I don't know the, how we'd have something urgent that, that the superintendent w wasn't putting before us. And if we do have things that we want to talk about in the future, the appropriate venue within the structure of our agenda is to do it under subcommittee and liaison reports so that if you had something that you wanted to discuss in the future, you could at that point ask a subcommittee to do would it, it. Would it be appropriate on, on, under that category to just put other? Mm. Not give everybody. I, I, I don't, well, I don't I mean, think we really need I mean, to. I mean, do we all chair a subcommittee? Well, kind of. I mean, but that's part of the problem. Like, what if it doesn't have anything to do with a subcommittee? You're, you're a subcommittee like, you know, right. you went to uh, something it, and you want to yeah. share it. Like, we don't have any place for that. And I, I guess I, that's what I always thought well, of as my business. position as the chair. I'm afforded carte blanche to whatever I want to say. You folks right. don't. So, I mean, uh, committee. I, I just a, a spot. Maybe we should just we could rename it to committee and member reports. I have no problem with that. Would that? We, I just we, want to make sure that we have a place for all this. You know, there's like stuff that happens yes. that we want to talk about, and I just don't know where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I don't know point. where that. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if we don't want to put new business on, well, that's fine. I just want to I make mean, sure that well, we have I mean, some idea of where that's going to go. So. Sorry. Oh, so I think there's a difference between a business that's actionable that we're going to take an action, which seems like that would violate the open meeting right. laws, and that just a report. Where you're saying, hey, I was at this right. conference and this came up, and I just want to tell you about it, right? right? So that's. I mean, mm -hmm. r right now, Dr. Ampey is attending a conference right. that would not fit under any of these committee reports, but I'm looking forward to hearing mm -hmm. her. And other than a specific agenda item under that, uh, maybe the word members or, or member reports. Member yeah. report. 
Yeah, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Did we subcommittee <laughs> member reports? That would, that would member report. Report. Do you, do you How about recall? that? Can, can I ask you a question mm -hmm. on our superintendent? Do you recall, uh, in your experience as a school committee member, if on your agenda you had a space for members to say what was new on their mind? It would come up under more subcommittee reports, um, but we never had new business. No. Mm -hmm. No. It's the same reasons that Mr. Schlickman had mm -hmm. uh, articulated. Uh, you could have me member reports, I suppose, mm -hmm. under committee reports, um, but again, then there would have to be some definition of what a report would consist of. Right. How about, how about a spot announcements? Oh, yeah. Just or announcements. Something like mm -hmm. that. It, whatever we do, we can't, it cannot be actionable requiring right. a vote. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Because that right. would have to be, be articulated in some way in, in the agenda. Right. But an, I it, agree. It, mm -hmm. if, if we want to announce a member is participating, participating in a play, there's a spot for mm -hmm. it. Right, exactly. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, so maybe about, instead of new business announcements. 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 Mm -hmm. How's that? Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Paul? Can we, uh, I, 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 if we dispose, uh, if we dispose of the motion before us, I would support a motion. Pull for my motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you like? I pull my motion. I amend. I actually, I'm gonna. Amend, so I amend. And I'll try a new Don't one. Amend pull, the pull the first one. <laughs> new one is to amend BEDB to include an item called announcements that will be on the. Right. Second. There we go. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on. To committee reports. Now we have to. Then we have to approve the whole policy. Well, yes. Okay. okay. Oh. Uh, thank you. Oh. Yes. Okay. Right. Approve right. for second reading. Uh, I move we approve uh, B E D B for second reading. B E D B A for second reading. As amended. As amended. Is there a second? second. second. Thank you. Further discussion. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Now may I go on to the. Now you can. Thank you. To subcommittee reports, policy and procedure, Mr. Pierce. Well, we just uh, approved some policies. Thank you all very much for going through that. Um, we will meet again on December 2nd. And uh, I think, has our agenda been posted yet? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah, last week. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but it be mm -hmm. full of policies. Policies. Mm -hmm. Policies. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well said. Ms. Starks, budget. All right. Um, a couple of things. Uh, the first one is I want everyone to know that um, as you may already be aware that we are going to see some cuts in our budget uh, due to reductions by our Governor Patrick. No, I um, yes, we are. Uh, oh, uh, yes, we are. <laughs> Speaker DeLeo. No, that's different. Okay. Got so it. Okay. the cuts are coming in two packages. There's a first set of cuts that Patrick does not need approval for. Um, those are going to be things like regional transportation, special education reimbursements, METCO funding. Um, most of those have already been announced. Um, those are going to affect us directly. Um, there's a whole bunch of other line items uh, that are going to be affected that he has control over. He asked the legislature to also make cuts to cities and towns. DeLeo has said no. Um, but we have a $329 million budget gap. So we're going to have to find, well, he's going to have to find out where those come from. I, we can all know that they're coming from our pockets. Um, so I just want people to be aware of that. We don't really know exactly what everything is going to be or when it's going to be. Um, but, uh, you know, I do want to make people aware of that, um, that that is happening. Um, I know. Adam and, and everyone is, is well on top of this and well aware of it, but a lot of people who watch may not realize that that's what's going on. Um, and uh, the second thing that I wanted to let the committee know is that long range planning, I hope anybody who uh, attends that meeting got the um, notice that they had to move it from December 2nd. That is no longer a meeting time. Um, and they are looking at either December 15th, which is a Monday, or December 18th, which is a Thursday. Um, and they have sent out a doodle poll to try to figure that out. In the morning? Yes, it's always at 8 okay. o'clock, yeah. Um, so those are the two things on budget. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was when we went to long-range planning, the last meeting they had, um, and then also I saw a, a mail from... I guess it was from someone in Melrose, and I forwarded the information mm -hmm. to everybody about how Melrose um, has changed their website to put up 
um, they're going to like change the information on their website to give people updated information about schools and schooling and what's going on. And, and I just thought, and then after when we went to long range planning, we brought all this data with us about schools and schooling and, and kind of town census data, all this great data. And I realized that we don't, like we should share that with everybody. Like a lot of people may may really be interested in that data. And and uh, as I was reading this stuff on the Melrose web page, it was just interesting. You know, it was like, you know, going to school isn't the same as it was. And and you know, I think mm -hmm. we all do it. You know, things get stuck in your head. You you think, you know, oh, we are a town of X. We have this many children. We have this many you know percent of families with children in the school. And and yet those statistics change. And it would be good, I think. And so I am wanting to pass the torch to our community relations team to kind of maybe s figure out a way or where we can put some of that information. Mm -hmm. I like it the Melrose one. It's literally right on the front page. Mm -hmm. um, but I, ju I just, and it doesn't have to happen very often, but I think that mm -hmm. there's just some really good data out there that if we shared it and people knew because when we went to long range planning, we realized that there was just a lot of stuff. We live with it every day. Like we know God, we have this whole new curriculum. We have the common core. We have this new teacher eval system. People who aren't in education don't necessarily know that. They don't realize all the stressors and, and all the stuff that's going on in the schools. And I feel like more and more people, the more transparent we can be with what's going on and just sharing that information, the more they will understand what we're dealing with. I, so. I think also those other people coming to the long range planning, if they had that knowing where it was, could touch on it ahead, mm -hmm. save you a lot of time in that yeah. presentation. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they come prepared. Like we're trying to do with our agenda and stuff exactly. like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. I just I just thought, you know, maybe you guys could take a look at that. I'm not on that committee, but <laughs> you can come visit. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm glad to if you guys mm -hmm. are going to talk about that, that would be awesome. Yeah, we, we had, uh, well, when the esteemed chair of the budget subcommittee is concluded with the report, policies and, uh, I mean, uh, community relations may, may uh, take you up on that. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and the only other thing I had is um, I did want to mention that, um, unfortunately, in the article that we have made in the advocate today, uh, we are quoted as saying the school committee admitted it violated the state's open meeting law. Um, and I want to make sure that people know that we did not state that. <laughs> um, we did not violate the open meeting law. Um, what we stated was that it's hard to know with the open meeting law um, and that we are, we admitted that we are continued, continuing to support the open meeting law um, as we move forward, but that certainly uh, we did not admit to uh, uh, making that mistake. So there you go. I'm done. Thank you. Community relations. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Would it be appropriate to make a comment about the 9C now or later when? You can do it now. Okay. I was actually waiting for um, Ms. Johnson to get here. She said capital planning, but <laughs> but, but we, we did talk about what the effect would be, and I, I think it would be good for you to know. Mm -hmm. um, if you remember, we're one year out on Circuit Breaker, mm -hmm. and it's been a, it's been a great uh, budget tool to be able to do that. So we won't be affected by 9C cuts to circuit breaker this year, but certainly would be next year. Now, in terms of how um, Diane budgets, she, how, how this is going to work this year for those districts that, that are still getting their, you know, spending the money that they're getting that year, is that there's usually a fourth quarter payment, mm -hmm. and it appears that, that what's going to happen now is that's not going to be distributed. But usually that's more than what you've anticipated. Mm -hmm. It's not usually a lot, but it's, and they think that they can cover it. So what's going to happen is that when we budget, we, we budget for what we would be getting, not anything beyond that. So in terms of our budget for next year, we, we didn't, take into account that there could be any extra money. So that's good news. On, on the Medco, um, our director is looking at some ways to be able to affect, uh, to, to save some money in transportation. That's what it, the money is about. Um, we had actually hoped to have more evening, trans, you know, buses, and, but that may not be possible now. The, the other area is kindergarten, and again, um, it's about a 1.5. We're going to have to look at 
some way to trim some of the probably the professional development. We haven't entirely decided how that's going what that's going to look. We're certainly not going to change the fact we have TAs in the classroom. That's where most of the money goes. So I think we're going to be okay this year with these cuts. Um, but any change is always um, you would hope to do something else with it. I'd ask you to keep us abreast as things come, mm -hmm. things that you have to cut or trim or it, mm -hmm. it may have a ripple effect in the fall year. Just keep, make us aware so that everyone knows. We don't want to, you know, we trust you. It's just, as, as uh, Ms. Stocks just said, the transparency out there it makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. when, the, when the hit comes. We're, mm -hmm. we're telling people up front. That's it. Mr. Schlickman, community oh, relations. Okay, Before, uh, I'll do community relations after I make a comment on the 9C cuts. I want to say how hurtful these kind of cuts are to school systems, much more than any other entity. Because for school systems, we buy our stuff in the summer for the school year. We commit to hiring teachers for the school year. Right. So if, if we take a cut in J uh, July 1st, you know, we, we can adjust our budget. But a cut of $50,000 at this point of year is the equivalent of a $100,000 cut that would come at the beginning of the year. Just because of what we'd have to do is an adjustment mm -hmm. to fold that into th this part of the year. The state really needs to understand that even if it's on, a, on an account like circuit breaker or uh, transportation reimbursement or sped reimbursement, just because transportation isn't in the classroom. It's coming out of the same budget. Mm -hmm. And that if you lose $100,000 from your transportation account, it's just the same as losing $100,000 from another account because you're going to have to make up for it someplace. Right. Cuts, mid-year cuts from the state on schools are a huge problem. And, and, and the folks that are sitting up on Beacon Hill need to understand what the impact is. The town can postpone paving a street until the next fiscal year, in theory. They have more flexibility. We don't. We've committed, we've spent. At this point of the year, we're on track to close out our budget in June and all of a sudden have some of the stuff thrown at us. Uh, is problematic. And there are other districts, such as the regionals, who are really relying on the regional transportation, including Minuteman, who, who are definitely going to be hurt by that, how are they going to make it through the school year if all of a sudden revenue they've counted on doesn't come through unless something miraculous happens and we don't have to heat the buildings yeah. this year? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I come in? Go ahead. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, all I, the time. I, you, you folks are going to eat up this time. We're, we're not getting out until 930 as usual, I know. Yeah. Um, you're absolutely right, and I think most districts are not in the position we are in terms of how we've managed to get one year out on Circuit Breaker. Mm -hmm. But we've been in that spot before, and, mm -hmm. and that's about the amount of money that we'd be looking at this year if these cuts were to go through. That would be a huge cut that we'd have to make up. And you're absolutely right, doing it during the middle of the year is, is really tough. Um, and so I don't want to make it seem like that's a rosy picture. It's just that we've we've managed to plan so that mm -hmm. we've sort of buffered ourselves from the immediate effect, mm -hmm. and then can budget anticipate anticipating it next year. Okay. Now, now, now to be on topic on community relations, our yeah. next topic uh, is going to be dashboard uh, and look and Ooh. starting to talk on website. So uh, we'll have to put a doodle out, and make sure that Miss Starks is there because that certainly folds into the website. Sure. We'll, we'll put a doodle out to figure out when people can make it. We'll probably do it sometime in December. Cool. Great. Uh, curriculum instruction assessment, Dr. Ampey is not here, and facilities, Mr. Thielman is not here, so we'll hear from them in the next meeting. Um, the chair, I would like to mention a mock town meeting. Uh, Lauren McKenney and Siobhan Foley's third grade classes from Thompson School participated in a mock town meeting last Friday at Town Hall. Each class presented and supported a warrant article, and the other class opposed it. I'm happy to say that both articles passed. Uh, these students were phenomenal. It was videoed. Uh, we have to add one more piece, and I'm going to speak to Ms. Foley at the end of this. It is the hope that AECMI will have this for, uh, to be televised over the Thanksgiving holiday. Oh, great. And it is my hope to take this, docu uh, this uh, piece of media to town meeting and share it with the town meeting the first night. 
I commend the students, teachers, and parents for making it a wonderful educational experience. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really great. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, with that, if no one else has any other business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We're not going to do executive There is no executive session today. Oh, oh there isn't. Oh. Holy moly. Okay. I, I, we accept your apologies profoundly. Motion to adjourn. Well. <laughs> second. second. All those in favor? Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Aye.